the mission to understand the jungle is only just beginning. The rainforest is the most complex place on Earth. But in Borneo, one man believes he has the technology to unravel the chaos of life that is the jungle. Roman Dial's day at the office is like no other. His destination is at the top of the tallest jungle trees in the world. Unlike most of the other canopy scientists who seem to be studying the canopy one tree at a time, I'm more interested in the, the whole forest. Other researchers need to climb down between each tree, but thanks to a crossbow, Roman doesn't have to. Oh, I got it! I can't believe it! I snagged it! So now I'm just gonna get this fishing line and reel in the orange cord, and, uh, and then we'll be able to set up the rope and get to the next tree. This clever technique means he can move from tree to tree, staying up for days at a time. His extreme methods are set to transform our understanding of the jungle world. Roman is realizing a dream, to become a canopy creature. Compared with most creatures here, his ability to get around is still pretty limited. But there are some distant relatives who seem to encourage his modest achievements. These orangutans have been, um, wow, look at that, a gift. Thank you. Oh, now you want something in return? It's one of the best places to see orangutans moving through the forest up close. The subject of Roman's study is not the wildlife, but the trees themselves. He believes they are the key to a better understanding of how the jungle works. Step one is to make a map of this new world. But his map is like no other on Earth. A laser beam and GPS linked to a computer measures the volume of the jungle's trees and plots the spaces between them. The technique turns complex vegetation into simple blocks. The result of all this? The first ever 3D jungle map. This incredible map can help us interpret the structure of the jungle and compare the shapes and volumes of different forests. Roman's data does not only provide a new way of seeing the jungle, it will also provide an insight into evolution itself. This computer realization can take us on a virtual tour through the canopy. But there are those who are starting to do it for real. For Nalini Nadkarni, this is a jungle first. It's her maiden voyage on a new kind of jungle craft. She's probably the world's most experienced canopy scientist, but she's never seen it like this before. She's boldly going where no one has gone before. Research by people like Roman and Narlini 
has revealed that 10 times more species live here than we once thought inhabited the entire planet. 30 million species of animal may live in the canopy world. A single tree can hold more species of ant than are found in the whole of the UK. Rainforest wraps around just 6% of the Earth's landmass, and yet it contains more than half of all living things. It's a green frontier that awaits the new jungle explorers. Jungle exploration is the ultimate adventure. But it's easy to get carried away by the latest technology. We know next to nothing about the creatures that are hidden behind this mass of leaves. Most of the jungle still remains a dark and mysterious place. Tracking down even a large animal here can be like searching for a needle in a green haystack. However, some of the jungle's animals are so elusive and so exciting that they stand out like a holy grail. And people will go to the ends of the earth to find them. On the island of Sumatra, there's a giant predator whose behavior has never been observed in the wild. It's the Sumatran tiger. This brief, blurry shot is the only moving image of one ever recorded in the wild. Only the jungle could hide a big cat for so long. These two men believe they have the technology and the forest know-how to film the tiger once and for all. Jeremy Holden has been studying the tigers here for over 10 years, but in all that time, he has never had more than a brief glimpse of one. He's guiding wildlife cameraman Gavin Thurston deep into the forest. Gavin brings with him remote infrared cameras that may help him succeed where others have failed. Tigers once roamed throughout Sumatra. Now, an inaccessible corner of Karinchi Sublat National Park is one of their last strongholds. Protected by a thick barrier of plant and insect life, this is one of the remotest locations on the planet. Today, only about 500 Sumatran tigers survive in the wild. To find and film just one of them will be a huge publicity coup for the conservation of this endangered animal. But Gavin is under no illusion as to the difficulty of the task. Quite probably it's the biggest challenge of my career. I mean, nobody has ever successfully filmed tigers in the wild here. Um, so it could actually be the highlight of my career if I get a shot, or alternatively, I suppose it could be the end of my career if I don't. And joking apart, you do feel blooming nervous out here. Um, I don't think I'll be going anywhere much on my own. I'll always be <laughs> hanging on to Jer Uncle Jeremy. Just getting to the tiger's habitat will be half the battle. Day one involves crossing the same river seven times. Mm -hmm. 
the only animals Gavin has come close to so far are several hundred leeches. Have I? Oh, yeah, there's one there. These. Did you put that there? <laughs> uh, this is a leech, and he's got about 10 million friends. And every time you walk down the path, they latch straight onto your trousers or boots and then find a way to get to your skin. They're quite sweet, really, aren't they? Base camp is two days' walk from the nearest track. When you're this far from civilization, talk turns to what dangers may lurk outside. The main dangers here are certainly elephant. Really? Yeah. If you meet elephant, if you see a tiger, it's going to run away. If you see an elephant, it's going to chase you. I've only met them once in the forest. Yeah. And we had to literally run for our lives. Yeah, what about snakes? Things like king cobra, because that's quite a there's, aggressive snake. Yeah, isn't it? there's there's king cobra, there's red-headed crate, there's Sumatran spitting cobra. Oh. So all the deadly snakes okay. are here. I've seen all of them here as well. Perfect. Trodden on almost most of them. With the king cobra, six meters long, if you get bitten by it, you'd have to write a note to your wife and kids and that would be it. There's no way we could get you out in time. Great. So, uh, on that note, good night then. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not just large and venomous animals that can disturb your sleep here. In the jungles of Asia, there are unique parasitic moths, like something out of a horror story. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what you want to read before you go to bed, is it? Moth's drinking tears from the eye of the author who photographed himself. Attack occurred in the night. The moth's proboscis sucks from the outer part of the lid where there is an overflow of tears due to irritation. That's a great thought when you're just about to go to sleep, isn't it? Like so many jungle explorers before him, Gavin is willing to suffer just about anything to achieve his jungle dream. Somewhere out there stalks the elusive tiger. Gavin isn't the only pioneer trying for a jungle first. Off the east coast of Africa, on the island of Madagascar, one man is hunting for another infamous rainforest creature. Phil de Vries is searching for an animal that is legendary in the annals of jungle exploration. This is certainly a good place to look for extraordinary creations. 90% of creatures here are found nowhere else in the world. You got it. I've always wanted to do that. Chameleons are not what Phil is looking for. He specializes in bugs. And here lives an extraordinary giant moth so bizarre that at first no one even believed it could exist. If Phil is to have a hope of seeing the moth, first he must find a very special flower. In Madagascar, Phil is following in the footsteps of the first jungle explorers. Somewhere. I'll find you. He has spent most of his life in this kind of rainforest adventure. But the story of this quest goes back 150 years. It all began back in 1862 in this small office in the south of England. It was here that Charles Darwin first examined an unusual flower that had everyone baffled. 
an orchid from Madagascar that seemed to defy the laws of nature. This flower hid its nectar at the bottom of a long, narrow tube. It seemed inconceivable that any insect could ever reach it, but Darwin famously predicted that somewhere in Madagascar there must be a gigantic moth with a tongue 12 inches long. Darwin's peers ridiculed him for his prediction. But 150 years later, Phil has rediscovered the famous comet orchid high in a tree. And now, he hopes to show that Darwin was right after all. This is what Darwin was all excited about. Look at the size of that nectar. The moth has to have a proboscis that long to insert into there the beginning of the flower, the opening, down this tremendously long nectar spur just to get the reward, which is right at the bottom of that. The question is, will the strange flower act as bait to attract the world's most remarkable moth? Up in the tree, he rigs an infrared camera. If the moth appears, it will be in the dead of night. But Phil's camera can film in total darkness using infrared light, invisible to the moth. There are no guarantees. Only 10% of Madagascar's original rainforest remains. This jungle is so disturbed that from one year to the next, no one can be sure that the moth still exists. The flower acts like a beacon, releasing a trail of scent through the forest. Hawk moths can pick up smells from long distances, but even so, it's a small flower, and it's a jungle out there. When all is ready, the infrared light is turned on. The flower in the tree and fill in the ground are bathed in a light visible only to our cameras. Now all he has to do is wait. And wait. It's going to be a long night. In Sumatra, Gavin and Jeremy don't have the luxury of a flower to bait their quarry. Somehow they have to predict where the tiger is likely to be. What I want to do is try and run it down. No, this is, uh, this is possible for tiger coming along here. No tiger is going to walk through that. Yeah, it's way too steep. No tiger is going to walk through that. The team will set up six different motion-sensitive cameras. Each is triggered to record when an animal trips an infrared beam. OK, that's it. Yep. The placement of the cameras is critical. They are primed to operate for weeks at a time and will record anything that moves, day or night. has a range of about 10 metres. The trouble is, a single tiger's territory is about half the size of New York City. Little wonder the shy tiger has never been filmed before. Oh, that one's fine. Gavin's Quest is one of the most ambitious projects ever attempted with this kind of technology. But high-tech equipment is increasingly being used by jungle researchers to open new windows on hidden worlds. And some of the most startling results are being gathered in the dead of night. In Panama, scientists are using imaging systems that cut through the darkness to reveal the secret world of the jungle's bats. Here, 72 species divide up the forest into different niches. Each lives in a different way. Each feeds on a different prey.
There are bats that eat fruit, bats that drink nectar, others that hunt every kind of insect. But as always, the jungle supports much more. There are killer bats here too. Some are built for fishing. There's another kind that eats frogs. And even one that hunts lizards. Not even the mice are safe from the nocturnal hordes. This is what the jungle is all about. Countless species all sharing the same three-dimensional world in superbly specialised ways. But the spectacle of the jungle isn't just about incredible diversity, it's also about huge numbers. In the Congo, another bat spectacle is about to be revealed, this time by heat-sensitive cameras. Thermal imaging shows animals hidden amongst the jungle's foliage. The warm body of a fruit bat shines out from the cooler vegetation. And these bats are on the move. For the first time, we can witness a nighttime migration of staggering proportions. Literally millions of bats are flowing out of the jungle to feeding grounds in the north of Zambia. dawn, the full extent of the spectacle is revealed. The greatest gathering of fruit bats anywhere in the world. Eight million bats hang from the branches of just one square kilometre of forest. Their collective weight has been known to break the branches of a tree. The phenomenon only lasts a matter of weeks and then suddenly the bats are gone, disappearing once more into the depths of the forest. Keeping track of a jungle animal as it travels through the forest is an almost impossible task. Even the largest of all of them is famous for its ability to appear for a moment and then melt back into the dense tangle of leaves. The one thing we do know about forest elephants is that there are hundreds of thousands of them in the jungles of Central Africa, but we have very little idea of what they do in the forest or where they go. Most of what little we do know comes from a time when hunters were guided by Bayaka pygmies to gather ivory by the boatload. Today, Bayaka trackers still lead people into the forest, hunting for elephants. There's a small one, I've already seen it. It's like a young male again. So he's just going to have a look and see if he can see other tracks. Steve Blake is a biologist from the Wildlife Conservation Society. If he can get near enough, he may finally solve the mystery of where these jungle giants go. Getting close without being charged depends on the hunting experience of a tracker named Mambellamy. Mambellamy's probably killed 
between 100 and 200 elephants in his life, I should think. So he's got incredible experience of how they react when they're hurt, how they react when they're aggressive, how they react when they're frightened. Um, and so he's just invaluable, aside from his, you know, tracking skills. Mambellamy no longer hunts elephants for food. And these men bring tranquilizer darts, not bullets. Darting an elephant has been done before on the savanna, but getting close to elephants in this thick forest is extremely dangerous. Mike Cock, the team vet, knows just how dangerous. Elephants specialise in not only trying to uh, spike you with their tusks, but but they also use their very large body size to press down on you, so they'll use the front of the, of the trunk and the forehead to try and squash you. Um, and I mean, there'd be many instances where elephants have basically squashed people so you can hardly find them. For a moment they get lucky. An adult female enters the small clearing. These three elephants know something's going on. They've sort of spotted us, but now they're, they're not sure quite what's happening. The vet is trying to advance and get into a position to take a shot. We've just frozen because even though we're exposed and in the open, um, elephants are called very bad eyesight. And as long as you remain still, it's hard for them to see you. He must fire the dart into her hind flank. But with the animal head on, he can't get a clear shot. This is the most dangerous moment of all. If she catches his scent, she may well charge. The drugged elephant is down, but now there's a complication. A young male is standing guard. There's no time to lose. The men decide he's small enough to be driven off. Okay. Zilla, Mike, how's she looking? Do we have time? Good. This is what their expedition is all about. A pioneering project to place tracking collars on the elusive forest elephant. But the WCS team need to work fast. They want to keep the elephant sedated for as short a time as possible. An antidote to the tranquilizer will bring the elephant around. It's time to beat a hasty retreat. The 
collar acts like a mobile phone attached to a GPS. Twice a day, it will beam the elephant's location via satellite to the World Wide Web. The animal's journey will be plotted on the internet every day for two years. The mystery of where the Congo's elephants go is about to be revealed. Back in Madagascar, Phil is still waiting for his jungle first. I gotta move this leg. It's dying. And he's starting to doubt if the moth will ever appear. In Sumatra, they've had better luck. They found tiger tracks. Yeah, we've got a, a real clear, clear pug here. This is a the front foot. What's often the case is when you set these cameras, is the tigers are curious. So they follow exactly the path you've taken the day before to see exactly what you're about. Fantastic. This is a territorial scrape here. You see, beautiful clear print here. She's dug her feet, foot in, scraped it back. Yes. Straight through, she's following exactly the trail we were on yesterday. Gavin knows Sumatran tigers can be man-eaters. And suddenly, meters. stalking a deadly predator doesn't seem such a good idea. Is there any chance she could still be around then? Maybe, who knows? If we're all right just walking up on her like that, then we've got no chance of her getting a bit, I don't know, no, territorial she... with us. Or... No, no. If she hears us coming, <laughs> she'll be long gone. So this could be it. This could be it. The motion sensor beam has been broken. But have they captured the tiger on tape? Whatever's passed has passed at 2.23. So it's about maybe a 10 second delay. Water's moving. It's definitely come through here because this is the only track it can possibly take. Shit, it's not on there. Is that the end then? That's it, that's two minutes. I think what's happened is probably The delay between the animal coming through the sensor and, and reaching the camera. Yeah. It's just, it was, it's too long. The tiger has outfoxed them. Damn. The technology has let them down. Phil is becoming equally disillusioned. But eight hours into his stakeout, <laughs> 142 years, seven months, and five days after Darwin's prediction, all his efforts are about to pay off. Oh, there it is. It's hovering, it's hovering in front of the orchid. There it is, the tongue, look at the tongue's coming out, man. Amazing, look at that. Trying to find the opening. There it goes, it's in. It's drinking. Yahoo! <laughs> Unbelievable. But we did not get, we did not get it pulling the pollen area, and I didn't, in, so if when you, if you can't, it, just, it came in right here, Un, and, and it hovered. Was tongue unfilled, or it yeah, unfilled I, yeah, it. There's tons of that. It and, unfilled it, yeah. And it mm, pushed yeah. itself down yeah. in, and then once it did that, um, I'll bet you anything, is that once the vicidium, the sticky bit of this uh, pollinium, there it is, <gasps> there it is, going, unbelievable. There it goes, the moth is back.
Darwin dared to predict such a bizarre creation could evolve in the jungle. Never thought I'd live to see that. And it's required a combination of modern technology and a lot of old-fashioned patience to finally reveal the creature in action. So what is it about the jungle that drives such extreme evolution? The structure of the place traps a constant layer of heat and moisture. Nutrients and energy are trapped into a cycle that fuels a creation explosion. And a variety of life that is found nowhere else. One of the most dramatic demonstrations of this diversity can be found in the jungle's bird life. The forest is so full of fruit that male birds are free to concentrate all their efforts on wooing their females. These displays take many forms, but when it comes to the courtship dance, there is a small orange bird in New Guinea that is the top of its tree. The king bird of paradise does just about everything possible to impress a mate. In Central America, Kim Bostwick believes she has discovered a contender for the king bird's crown. It's the red-capped mannequin. Most jungle researchers can't get near their subjects, but Kim's birds are positively jumping to be noticed. They don't mind me being here, and they kind of show off. That's actually what their whole life is about, is showing off what they can do so that the females can be impressed and also mate with them. Right there, we just heard a male uh, doing a, a little bit of a courtship display. The displays of these mannequins are so fast that there's no way the human eye can see what they're doing. But with high-speed imaging, the secret of the dance can finally be cracked. This little baby was the breakthrough for, the, for my research. It's a high-speed video camera that enables me to record at 500 frames a second. Your average camera goes at 30 frames a second, which means you're missing 90% of what's happening. So with this camera, I'm able to capture these behaviors and play them back in slow motion and just look and see what they're doing. The big mystery is how do these birds make their peculiar high-pitched calls? The images from the high-speed camera show clearly that the sounds come not from the bird's mouth, but from its wingtips. At 80 hits a second, this is quicker than the speed of a hummingbird's wing. And there's more. The dance of the mannequin has another surprise in store. Kim's knowledge of the bird's ritual is now so intimate she knows every move. So, first thing you do is you're sitting on your perch and click, you fly away. Once you're out there, you come swooping in, do a loop-de-loo in the air, land on the perch, and at the end of that, what the males do is they lean over, lift up their tail, quiver the tail slightly, and nail their feathers against their sides. And now you're gonna do a moonwalk, and this is the only known case of birds moonwalking to my knowledge but they basically do these little steps backwards uh, and it looks like a Michael Jackson slide. It's very nice.
Michael Jackson's moonwalk can be found in the jungles of Central America, who knows what we might find next? With the right technology, more and more of the jungle's secrets are being revealed. And today's jungle explorers are starting to produce real results. The tagged elephant has traveled over 60 kilometers in just a few days. A pattern of their jungle behavior begins to emerge. Jungle elephants are traveling further than anyone ever imagined. They're migrating huge distances through the forest and across park and country borders alike. Favorite destinations are fruiting trees that may be imprinted on their memories from youth. And they also converge on unusual clearings in the heart of the forest. It turns out the elephants create these mysterious openings, mining them for minerals. And they gather here in huge numbers. Elephants are forest engineers. They actively shape the jungle, driving paths through the forest and distributing seeds in their dung along corridors that stretch for hundreds of kilometers. One of the most profound discoveries of this study is the extent to which these elephants are changing the structure of the jungle. If the animals can shape the jungle, Roman Dial's research is showing that the opposite is also true. The form and density of the jungle can also change the shape of the animals within. Here in Asia, the canopy creatures have abilities not seen anywhere else, and Roman's computer map shows why this might be. The open spaces here are much more, much, much bigger, almost by an order of magnitude, than they are in the New World tropics. In Borneo, you punch through this layer into this really big open zone up high. So this is really a unique place. Roman is comparing this forest to other jungles he's mapped. Elsewhere, the trees are tightly packed together. But in Borneo, the structure of the forest is different. Here, the blocks of vegetation are much further apart. There is simply more space between the trees. Roman's measurements reveal how a difference in the spacing can change the environment completely. And that means the animals change too. Behind me here, you can see that the forest is really open. This openness of the forest is unique to the rainforest of Borneo in Southeast Asia. And it's this open space that changes things for the animals, that makes gliding perhaps the best way to move through the rainforest. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is a Draco. It's the famous flying lizard of Borneo. This one's a male, he has a, a throat fan, but what's much more interesting is his ribs on the side of his body extend out almost as long as his body is to form wings. We're about 100 feet up off, oh my, there he goes. This is the only place in the world you're going to see lizards fly. It's incredible.
Roman's work shows how a change in the structure of the forest can drive the creation of new species. Flying lizards, frogs, squirrels, and even flying snakes. Most evolved here and nowhere else. Scientists think we've only discovered 5% of the animals that live here. It is a new image of abundance and vitality, but it hides a stark truth. Many jungle creatures are threatened with extinction. 2,000 kilometres away, Gavin and Jeremy are on the trail of one of the most vulnerable, the Sumatran tiger. Followed this tiger's tracks now for about a kilometre and a half, about 20 minutes, and she's still going. She's headed up this slope. Jeremy tells me that once she's on this path, uh, there's no turn off at all. So she's definitely gonna go past the camera trap. So the only thing is, I'm really excited, but I'm just trying not to build my hopes up after what happened last time with the camera failing. I'm not sure I could bear to see that again. The tracks have gone straight through it. I tell you, if she hasn't, if she isn't on that tape, I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> This is it, the moment of truth. What do you reckon? Yes? No? I say, I, I don't normally get excited, but I am quite excited about this. So this has been knocked. That's not the, that's not the company mm. anymore, is it? It's not looking down the track. No, it was looking... Yay! Oh my God. Flemonic. Fantastic. Oh my god. He's gonna come right in this where we spray the fish. Oh my god. Right, no, you go. really go. don't realise how lucky you are to get this. We can watch it on the laptop. You. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well um we'll go and check the other track. <laughs> Oh my god, that's beautiful. Shit, it's there for ages. There's that bat again. Bat here catching... Oh, wow. oh, two of them. First ever recorded behaviour of bats catching flies around a tiger. Thank you. Thank you. Makes it, makes it even more worthwhile when you get the shot. Well, it's great for me. Filmed with infrared night vision, the elusive Sumatran tiger emerges from the shadows. It is the first clear record of this animal in its wild jungle habitat. It is hard to believe that a giant predator like this could have remained hidden for so long. But this tiger's home is the most complex place on earth, and secrets hide easily here. It takes perseverance and dedication to unravel the mysteries of such an inhospitable place. And space age technology is opening up a whole new frontier here on earth. Deep in the jungle, modern-day adventurers are taking us to places we've never been before. They're giving us a new vision of the jungle. It's one that can provide insights into evolution itself, the drive that created all life, even us. <laughs> 